Hi, Leo friends. How are you? Nice for you to nice to see you back again. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks for your likes and your shares. I really do appreciate all of that. Um, there also is information down below. Anything you need to know about this um, reading is in the description. If you have any other questions after you read through that description, please let me know. There's also an email address there if you're interested in getting a um, a reading. Uh, personal reading based on your personal energy. Uh, just remember that this is a general reading and it won't be for everyone. However, it will be for the collective Leo, uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. If you're interested in knowing what your Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter sign are, please go to my about page at the very bottom and you will see there is a link where you can plug in your information and you can get what you need. Um, there is also a donation button down there and I am um, really grateful to receive anything that, that you would uh, give to help me keep this channel open so I can keep reading for you. Okay? All right. So three more shuffles here. One for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter from now until the 15th of November. Now until the 15th of November, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. First card out, Leo. Wow, look at you. <laughs> Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles comes up when someone's bringing a gift. So they're going to um, bring a gift, either a gift of love, a gift of um, a pentacle, so you can plant it with them and, and be abundant and grow things. Or they're bringing in an apology of some kind, that could very well be. Someone wants to, to bring in something to you anyway. Um, and it is a new start, usually a new start in love. Next card out is the Two of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles usually shows up when you have been juggling. You have gone from the one to the two of the Pentacles. <laughs> and uh, usually when you've been juggling um, a lot of work, work and home, work-life balance, that kind of thing. Um, this one, um, it looks to me like there is a, a ship in the back and you are so busy juggling that you don't even see that the ship is ready to leave. So you've got a lot on your mind, a lot on your mind, a lot on your plate and um, understood that you wouldn't see what's going on in the background there, but it looks like there's someone waiting there for you, like, hello, <laughs> and uh, you don't see it because you're just trying to keep all the balls in the air. I'm showing the Queen of Swords. Now, the Queen of Swords is someone in your life who might give you advice or whom you might go to for advice. It could also be um, someone who is a love interest or who has been a love interest, someone in the future. Now the Queen of um, the Queen of Swords is intelligent, very book smart, and she um, really is very, she picks her words carefully, but she's very, um, she knows what she's saying. She, she doesn't, she doesn't misstep in her words. So um, you can see that uh, her sword is pointed up and that indicates conversation is to be had. Um, she usually speaks mind over heart though. So she's not gonna be the emotional queen. She's not gonna be the emotional person you're looking for. She's gonna make decisions based on logic and um, you know factual information. So you see right at the very top there, there is a butterfly there. So that indicates that there is some transformation coming. So that her words can be transformative. So she is a good person to go to um, if you have uh, questions about, you know, just life in general, because she has a lot of life experience. She's a queen, right? Usually someone who's a little bit older, <clears throat> or at least has been through a few things in their life. Why is the queen here, though? Hmm. So the queen is here and looking at death coming up behind you. Maybe you've been a bit miserly, Leo, like miserly either with your time, um, with love, with abundance, with your money, 
Um, but it looks like death is sneaking up on you here. <laughs> death is sneaking up and there is going to be a transformation. So the things that you're trying to, um, the things that you're trying to hide here, uh, could be very well, um, divulged. <clears throat> could be divulged, right? Because um, if you're going to go through a transformation, you're no longer going to be hiding. Um, you're no longer going to have to protect your heart either. I also see that as um, hiding from transformation. <laughs> because if you look at this guy, he's sort of looking over his shoulder at, at death like, oh man, what's this dude here for? But death usually does show up when there is transformation that's needed. And then usually after transformation is the time to go in and um, think about it, right? Um, what are you going to transform into? Um, this guy's holding a serpent and he has a dog. And um, the, the light he's got is lighting the way. He is lit up by some stars here, but they are the lowest light, right? Sun, moon, stars. Um, that is the order of the brightness of the sky. So he's got the, the lowest light here, but he's not alone. He's with his companion and he is, um, and he's got a light that's directing him. So he's not completely in the dark, but usually when you're in a hermit mode, Leo, you probably won't be speaking to anybody. So you won't be reaching out to friends or family. You'll just be kind of, you know, in yourself, just trying to make decisions about life. Um, because it looks like you feel like you've, you've suffered a loss of some sort. So these, um, these three cups in front of you are what you're very, um, very concentrated on. You're very concentrated on what you feel as though you might have lost. Um, however, the two of cups is behind you and you don't see it, but there still is love here. Um, you know, sky is gray. Someone is screaming out for help in the water. You don't even hear that. You're oblivious. You're so taken. Um, you're so taken in by the things that you may have lost that you're not noticing anything around you. So um, don't miss the opportunities is the message I get from that. Lift your head. Don't miss the opportunities. Things that move away in your life are usually for a reason. Um, now, I'm not speaking of death, of course, but I mean people that move in and out of your life. It's usually for a reason that they move in and out of your life. Coming up under your... Um, coming up under the two of pentacles, Mercury <gasps> retrograde, can't speak. Um, coming up under the two of pentacles is, uh, the, um, card of feeling stuck. So feeling stuck, feeling caged in, feeling like you can't really move either way or you'll be cut. Um, this could be conversations that have been had in the past. It could be, you know, things that are, um, plaguing you in your mind. Conversations are going over them. You're overthinking this. Um, there is someone here who's going to save you, though, and um, if you just ask for help, you have to ask for the help. <laughs> I know that can be hard for a lot of people, but if you ask for help, um, help shall arrive. Coming up under the Queen of Swords is the Wheel of Fortune. So uh, once you get out of this cage and once you decide that what you've lost is not as much as what you've gained, um, it looks like the uh, Wheel of Fortune will be turning in your favor. So um, we'll be turning in favor of the things that are coming up next. Uh, that's coming up under your Queen of Swords. So I'm just saying the Queen of Swords could be a love interest as well. Um, let's keep going and see what's going on here. Coming up under the Four of Pentacles, which is the Miserly card. Ooh. Is the seven of, of um, wands. So the seven of wands usually shows up when you're you're very defensive. Um, you're defending your religion. You're defending your um, your lifestyle. You're defending where you live, how you work, um, that kind of thing. You could be defending yourself to other people. So um, yeah, defensive here. You can see this person in the middle is defending is defending these all of these rods are actions so it's things that they've done in the past that they're defending things that they're either going to do because this is pushing him forward right this is pushing you forward um he or she so um this is uh, being pushed forward from the old life to the new and this is um being uh feeling defensive about the decision making the decision making process you're going through some people might not um agree with the the um, the way that you're living your life, but it is your life to live and you're able to make, um, 
you are able to make decisions based on what your needs are. The thing is this, is you can get advice from other people, but people are always going to give you advice based on their own fear factor. So uh, if, you know, someone is like, oh, I'm, I'm going on a trip here. And the other person is like, I would never go on a trip there. Are you crazy? You know how violent it is over there? Like that's based on their own fear. It's not based on yours. That's why you really need to make your own decisions in your life. Got a king of swords. You know what that means? We've got a, a couple of match sets here, some bookends. So uh, the king of swords is um, the king who is, um, again, um, book smart, very intelligent, and uh, the person who is going to give you advice based on uh, factual information. So you're not going to get anything that is not fact related from your King of Swords. Uh, the King of Swords is also someone who just doesn't have time to mince words. He's very busy. He uh, takes care of the whole, um, you know, of his empire. So he's running his empire with the queen and neither one of them has time for mincing words. Both of them are, uh, they can be kind of sharp with their words. So if you were not already in a union, this could be you and your partner. Um, uh, if you are in a union, I would say that right now there is probably some trouble afoot. <laughs> that um, so there's uh, I think that the king is being quite defensive um, based on what you would like to do in your life. Hmm. But you're making good decisions because here comes the sun. Um, <laughs> I love this depiction, these little naked kids trying to pull down this flag. It's pretty hilarious, but um, it always makes me smile when I see it. <laughs> yeah, so cute. Um, one's pulling one way, one's pulling the other. So the sun comes out to illuminate all. There's no guesswork, right? It's it's the brightness of the sun. It's the apex of the, of the deck. It is um, one of two apex cards in the deck. So um, everything is illuminated, no more guesswork. Um, once you are... Once you've come past this King of Swords here and feeling defensive, um, it looks like what is in store for you is actually quite good. As long as you keep up conversation. You have to be a good communicator. In order to keep the sun shining, you've got to be a good communicator. you kind of got to be good in all things. Um, the uh, the sun will shine on a relationship that is in good communication. The sun will shine on a relationship where people are not defensive and, and feeling as though they have to defend themselves and then go up against the king of swords. So um, if you are in fact wanting the sun to continue to shine, I would say that whomever you uh, whomever you're partnered up with, if you are yet, um, that I would say that's that a lot of communication is going to be the only way that you're going to get through it. If you're not a communicator. If you are not a communicator, Leo, <laughs> you really need to learn to be one um, because all relationships need balance. All relationships need balance um, and, you know, beautiful at that. A uh, home work life balance, I'm uh, sorry, a home and work life balance. Um, also balance in the person that you pick to be your partner. Um, that person has to balance out who you are as well. You have to be forg forgiving and kind and you have to be in balance in order to be able to carry on through a relationship, at least a, a fairly long one anyway. Somebody's not telling you something. Um, could be that somebody is um, keeping something from you. This is conversation here. These are, this is an air sign card. So these um, swords are our communication, our conversation. So somebody is not telling you something. They're trying to make off with um, something that they haven't yet told you. Um, or they're lying to you, or they just are just not telling you the whole truth and maybe making you feel as though you're safe when maybe you're not. Um, this also could be someone quite literally stealing from you. So if things are going missing, I would take a look about. <laughs> mm. Strength. You are strong. The universe says you're going to need strength. So, um, yeah, if you're going to make conversation and you're going to be balanced and you're going to be telling people things that they didn't, you, they didn't know otherwise, 
this is you or this is your person, I'm not sure, but um, you're going to have to be strong to do that. Um, strength is really very necessary and strength comes from different places, right? It comes from uh, love, it comes from within, it comes from all kinds of different places. The Eight of Pentacles, working hard. Maybe you're working too hard and too much. Um, this can also mean, you know, that you're working really hard on your self-mastery, which is wonderful because everybody needs self-mastery. But this could also mean that you're overworked, um, that you, you know, you're, you're killing it at work, but you're killing yourself working. So, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a balance you need to find again. You know, Temperance and this card are touching each other within the reading. So Temperance is telling you that there must be balance, you need to be strong, and that there is going to be, um, that perhaps uh, self-mastery is where you're putting your time. If not, it could just very well be that you're working a lot. You're working a lot and someone doesn't really want you to. Maybe that's the reason why um, you don't have um, a relationship. If you don't, you could be working too much. However, Ten of Cups, yay! <laughs> Ten of Cups. So whatever you're going to be doing in this last part of your reading here, so the sun is shining on the conversation, you're going to be balanced, you're going to be telling the things that you didn't want to say before, um, you're going to be strong, you're going to, you know, you, you've already gotten into the self-mastery, and that has all led you up to here. And the other Apex card. So the Ten of, ten of Everything, right? The Ten of Abundance, the Ten of... Um, um, you know, happy life, happy wife, happy family, happy girlfriend, um, all of that stuff. All of the good stuff under the stars, by the fire, singing and eating, abundance in all things. Still some things you need to think over though. You're trying to see something from a different point of view um, and it could be your work life. It looks like it's touching your work life and your strength. So I would read that as you need to be strong to tell someone at your work life that you need to go after your Ten of Cups so it's time for you to maybe not work as much. Maybe you're going after your Empress. <clears throat> um, the Empress is someone who is intuitive. Uh, the Empress is, um, she is um, pregnant with everything. So pregnant with uh, creativity, she has um, she is usually spouse to the emperor, so the emperor is quite wealthy and therefore so is she. She is pregnant with child, she is fertile in all things, everything around her grows. Um, and animals can seek her out because of her kindness. Um, she just has a good energy and um, is very intuitive. So if you need any answers, you know an empress in your life, that's the person you want to go to for the answers. This is your last card, and we are looking at the star. As above, so below. So um, we are looking at the star, and um, um, the star is wishes fulfilled. Um, you know, beautiful, happy, wishes fulfilled. Uh, this is a balance in all things as well. And um, underneath, we have the High Priestess. The High Priestess is the Keeper of Secrets. And so if you have someone that you're confiding in, that would be um, your High Priestess, or perhaps you are the High Priestess. Whoops. Perhaps you are the High Priestess. That could very well be. Um, the High Priestess is someone who is a little bit older, someone who would be giving you advice, and someone who would keep your secrets. So um, that is the reading. And I am going to pull an extra couple of cards for you here. I'm going to pull uh, Notes from the Universe, beautiful deck that I just got not long ago. All right, you have what it takes. You have what it takes, Leo. You have what it takes. It says, always follow your heart unless it's been broken, then uh, you must lead it back into love the universe p.s did you know that the hearts hearts are never too big to mend too small to rebound or too tired to love again it's a great card it's not over it's never over it's always time to try again once you've healed um, from the past it's there's always time to try again it doesn't matter how old or how young you are 
Um, well, it would matter how young you are, depending on your age of consent in your state or in your province. Um, so uh, it doesn't matter how old you are, though. One more. Change is always good. I agree. I love change. I welcome it. I love change. It says, actually, the only effective way of changing another person is by changing yourself. I love that. Works every time, guaranteed. Though I'm kind of partial to the way you are right now. Tally who, the universe. So cute. Universe has your back, that's for sure. We're gonna do one more card. We're gonna do love messages here. And this is the power of love cards. I always have to look behind me the boxes there. See it? <laughs> it goes with this. <laughs> All right. Ownership. You acknowledge your misdeeds and accomplishments alike and learn to love them all as lessons. So important. You will continue to be on that roundabout. You know, that old squeaky um, roundabout thing that was in the schoolyard when we were young. You'll continue to ride that round and round and round with that that squeak in the same spot if you don't take ownership. Ownership is amazing. When you own your stuff, then you no longer have to be apologetic for it. When you own your stuff, you no longer have to be apologetic for it. And it does say here that they're all lessons. So as long as you learn from the lesson, whenever you get into a tight spot in life, I always say, what's the lesson I got to learn here? I don't want to do this again. So that's what it is. It's learning lessons. And that's it for you, Leo. I'm getting quicker at this. <laughs> and uh, so if you have any questions for me, please drop me a line. I am Elsie at tenofcupstarot.ca. And um, thank you for dropping in. Thank you for your subscriptions. Um, I'm always open to a donation if you'd like to do that to help me keep the channel open. This is my primary... Um, um, this is my primary um, means of work, so um, I do like to keep this channel open so I can keep it open for you to do what I love, and that is to give advice to those who need it. So if you do need a personal reading based on your own information and your own energy, please know that there is a $10 discount this month for the month of November on a $60 reading. So information is down below. Hope you're having a good night. Thanks, Leo. Bye.